all right? So you can also do them in different ratios. They don't have to be 9 by 9. Could be 9 by 27 or 9 by 36, where I just had 9 numbers on my vertical, but I had 36 across my horizontal, which would make a long, narrow torus. But whatever the smallest number is, in other words, if it's 9, uh, I'm only going to have one spire on that. So a 9 by 36 even is just going to have one spire. Whereas an 18 by 36, or an 18 by anything, is going to have two spires. So that's with my ratio being half, but it's a totally different number of circuits, totally different number of vortices. Every, the, those numbers are always changing, but you never have to shift anything's position. You don't ever have to change or fudge or account for anything that's missing. They always line up in a perfect sequence, which I think I clearly demonstrated in my other video. Um, there's a lot more you can go into this in terms of how this relates to various geometries, tetrahedrons, pyramids. I found the way that you can model all of it through the emanations of the torus. And by understanding the interconnection of your circuits, your spires. Um, and by the way, my spires are always unbroken sequences too. Um, how they create the interlaced doubling circuits how you can do that in various layers of the torus. Um, since making this discovery, I've just taken it so far so fast. Um, I wanted to share the basic aspects of it so that everyone can start working on it on their own. Um, but I am interested in teaching on it further. Um, if, if people have questions and they write in, I will try to post up what other information I can. My basic goal in this was to really just explain the basic symbol here um, to explain that basic symbol, how it worked, and what its principles are. All of that's already been covered even on, on Marco's videos, but I really wanted to get it ingrained because if you can't understand these principles, then doing the complex aspects of inter, uh, interweaving these circuits and understanding the spire sequences um, and how the mirror image works and how the vortices work, um, I just think that you will, you will always falter in that without this basic understanding. So I spent a long time just working on this before I even got to any of that. Um, but we would like to see some prototypes be built. Um, and I'm mostly more interested in teaching on the mathematics. I've gone through uh, a lot of physics, all the various equations, and can connect it with this and show the whole number relationships. So, uh, you know, I'm working now to model periodic table, and I'm interested to hear, in, you know, everybody's comments on all this work. Uh, we went from uh, the simple to the highly complex today. Ultimately what we are talking about here um, to me is even something totally different which is uh, when you get into the spiritual or the philosophical aspects of this. So all those are good topics. We hope to explain them further in videos. I just want everybody today to get an understanding basically of how to build a toroid. How many numbers do you need? You know, uh, how many tiles do you have to have? You have to be really thorough when you're doing this. So you can do, the, I, I showed you how to multiply them. You know, your basic 9x9 nine nine toroid, you have to make sure, you know, the common mistake is that you don't account for all your positives and negatives. But in your basic 9x9 nine nine toroid, you're going to have 162 tiles. All right? And we didn't even get into how you can turn them into hexagons and triangles. There was a lot more there in how you can create the matrix. We've only really looked at the diamonds. Um, but you need 162 tiles with the 18 vortices and 6 conductors. All right? So that's the minimum 
you can have. And now you can work on your own permutations. I think I've given you enough that you can build out the toruses for yourself. You can try the various ones, the two seven toruses. We just looked at one and eight. We do two seven, we could do four or five. You can make layers on this, like layers of an onion skin. And I even found out how to make doubling going in towards the center um, so that you can model it on every single axis. Um, so if anybody also has computer skills and would like to do animations, um, interested in communicating with people on that as well. I'm really trying to teach this to generate the understanding. So I really want to hear from people who are just looking to get a grasp on this. How does it apply to things in life? And I will try to keep posting more videos, uh, connecting with that, or hopefully doing seminars where working one-on-one, -on -one, or not necessarily one-on-one, -on -one, but working in person, you can definitely get a lot deeper into this. And the more we get 3D models, the more we can really show how it's functioning. But the um, way that I have it with the circuits, I believe, is the key to understanding this, to being able to model uh, different types of atoms to really get a hold of electrical motion and magnetism and that was initially our goal here so hope everyone has enjoyed the video I'm getting hoarse now so I'm gonna stop but we'll see you later peace